Welcome everyone to Gardening Questions Answered. This month we're going to be talking about home invaders, managing overwintering insects in your home. And today I am joined by two Master Gardener volunteers, Michelle Lawrenson and Mary Pobodinsky. So let us get right into it. So we're first we're going to talk about this little fellow right here. So the brown marmorated stink bug, that is what you're seeing a picture of. And we're going to talk a little bit about where they came from and how they're getting in and what to do about them once they have found their way into our homes. So it is important to know there are native stink bugs. And I, I only learned this fairly recently. You know, I knew that there were stink bugs around, knew that there was an invasive stink bug, and actually thought they were the same thing. Um, so I, it is interesting to know there are several different types of native stink bugs. And they are always out and about in our gardens throughout the, the growing season. And I think most of us become more familiar with them as it gets colder. And they are, you know, coming towards our house, looking for ways to potentially get into areas where they can overwinter in a warm place. And we're going to focus on the invasive brown marmorated stink bug. So it has come to us from Asia. We were just saying recently that you often hear about a lot of invasive things coming from this region of the world. And that is typically because they have a similar growing climate and therefore we're going to, you know, they're going to be able to survive uh, here in our area and parts of the United States. And it was the late nineties when we first noticed that they were here in the United States and they popped up in Allentown, Pennsylvania, first identified there and became known as the brown marmorated stink bug. And since then uh, they began to spread as they do, right? They've been noticed on farms and in forests as early as 2004. You get a picture of the eggs and the nymphs as well as the full grown. Beyond that, they began to spread further and start to cause um, a lot of damage to crops in our area and really along the mid-Atlantic area. And so here's some, some good photos of damage that's been caused by stink bugs. And I don't know that um, I myself have ever seen one on a crop, but I certainly have seen damage that looks just like this. So curious to see if uh, that's what it was caused by. So it's it's definitely a problem. It's not just a, a bug that has you know found its way here and is just hanging around, uh, not causing any difficulties for anyone. It is causing some significant damage to local crops. Currently, you can find the brown marmorated stink bug in 47 states in the U.S. So we tend to see them this time of year as they're coming into our homes. Um, in addition to causing difficulties for farmers and and, um, and crops, they're also a bit of a nuisance as they are finding their way in through different parts of our homes uh, to find a, a nice warm place to be here to spend the winter and then head back out in the spring. So uh, it's important to find out where they're coming in and to understand how big of a space they need to get from outside into your home. And I think this will be helpful to take a look at. So it it's a small hole that they need, but it isn't, um, but it, you know, they can't get through anything. <laughs> so an eight millimeter hole, as you see on the left there in, in A, uh, or a four millimeter slit would be enough for the bug to get through. And just to give you a sense of um, comparison, you're looking at a, a, a pencil that has a six millimeter diameter there. So those holes don't have to be that big for them to get through. So if you're like me, you're wanting to know how to keep them from coming in and spending the winter with us, there are several things you can do. First, and most importantly, you want to find out how they're getting into your home. Uh, it may be obvious in some places of your home um, that you may have uh, spaces around your windows or doors, but you're really looking for those even smaller openings. And you want to find, if you can, where they're coming in. So on the outside of your home, it's helpful to look around, see where they're starting to gather. More than likely, if one has found his way in, he's called his buddies and they are, they're all going to come in the same way. Uh, so you want to kind of walk around the outside of your home, take a look. You're looking for those smaller openings where um, you might be able to seal to keep them out. So one of the best ways to keep them from coming into your home would be to not allow them to have a place to get through, right? So sealing around your windows and doors if you recognize gaps that are big enough, uh, covering uh, air conditioners that might be mounted, and yet they still may get in. Or, you know, they may even just come in when the door is opened as you're coming in uh, for the evening. And so there are um, potentially a few ways that you can attempt to get rid of them, some easier than others. You can, you know, if there's one or two, you can go try to catch them, hand collect them. If you toss them right out your back door, they're probably coming right back in. So consider that. I have a friend who does that. It's like, I've saved that bug. I put it right back outside. Sure, it'll be right back tomorrow. <laughs> you could try vacuuming them. I think this is a common thing that people do with different bugs that are coming in in large amounts into our homes. 
Uh, keep in mind if you use a vacuum, a um, couple of things to keep in mind. One is that as the bug comes into your vacuum, it may not die right away and it could get back out. It could also um, emit the odor that uh, makes them so recognizable and that can stay in your vacuum for a while. Um, you could attempt to trap them yourself and especially if you have more than one or two, uh, there is, you know, we'll show you a nice, easy and cheap way to trap the bugs in your home and then dispose of them. We don't recommend uh, using an insecticide in your home. Um, air quality, you're gonna be breathing that. Uh, much easier to trap them and you'll, you'll see that there are several ways that you can do that, but we're gonna give you an example of a, a nice easy way to do that. Don't necessarily need to uh, recommend putting chemicals in your home. So this is a hand homemade trap that you can make very easily. Some of these items you might already have in your home. But as you can see, we've taken an aluminum pan, filled it with water, a couple drops of dish soap, mix it up so it's sudsy. And then um, at night, turn a light on and leave it be, you know, 10, 12 hours. And in the morning, if you have an abundance of stink bugs, you know, it depends on where they are in your home. If you put this in the basement, and you have one in your bedroom. I don't know. It's going to find its way there. But if you put it where you are seeing the stink bugs, uh, they should gather at the light and then fall into the water. And so you should have of dead stink bugs in the morning. So super easy. You can set up a few of these if you've got little lights that you can uh, get your hands on. So this is a nice way to do it without using an insecticide. So beyond that, um, all's not lost. It is an invasive uh, pest, but you know, the brown marmorated stink bug does not um, bring with it disease. It doesn't bite humans. Um, it's, it's, you know, affecting our crops and certainly is a nuisance over the winter. Uh, but there is a biological control that is already out and about in our area. So in New York, we do have uh, a, an insect called the samurai wasp. And the samurai wasp acts as a parasitoid. They will lay their eggs in the eggs of the stink bug. And then when the stink bug um, hatches, they will have the parasite from the wasp and it will eat uh, the, the nymph and destroy it. So uh, that is one good thing that's going on. Hopefully that will begin to control some of the population, certainly us uh, catching them over the winter, but that's not gonna get them all. So I just wanted you to be aware that there was one natural predator uh, that is out there. No, there's lots of other things that will eat the stink bugs. They're just not uh, a lot of predators, you know, praying mantis and such they're just not keeping the the populations down as much as we would like but this this uh wasp is is pretty pretty prolific you know it will parasitize 77 percent of the eggs and so when the eggs hatch instead of little stink bugs coming out little wasps come out it's kind of interesting it's like what those were stink bug eggs so thank you so much michelle um and now we're going to move on to mary and she's going to talk about this creature here so take it away mary that is multicolored asian lady beetles and they came from Asia, just like the, the name says. They, we've always had native beetles here, native lady beetles, and everybody's usually familiar with them. They're one of the most common bugs that people do know about. And people think of them as a nice bug because they're cute. They don't necessarily do anything horrible. Um, the invasive lady beetles do have some negative things though associated with them. And, and it's kind of important to be able to tell the difference. As it says, multicolored, you're not necessarily going to see either native or invasive lady beetles that just look like the ones in the pictures. But what you can look for on the um, invasive ones is kind of a little W or M shaped mark on their thorax, which is the area right behind their heads. That's really the only distinctive mark because as you can see from the pictures, there's a lot of different forms of, of lady beetles, both native and invasive. So how they got here was from Asia. And as Michelle said, we get a lot of things that are coming in now from Asia that are because there's so much more transportation available than there was a hundred years ago even but also because a lot of the things that have come in from Europe have been here for 400 years. So we really don't think of them as being something new. We think of them as being kind of already in the country. Um, these came from Asia and in 1973 and 1981, they were in, introduced in Pennsylvania on purpose by the USDA as a biocontrol agent because they do exactly the same things our native bugs do, our native lady beetles, 
which is they eat aphids, they eat scale insects. They are very good at controlling a lot of the things that we really need controlled for crops. In the 1980s, there was also an introduction, they think in Louisiana by a freighter traveling from Asia. So it's really hard to tell exactly what all of these creatures are coming from. I mean, they don't have passports, so we don't know exactly when and where, but they're finding them all over the place now, especially in the areas that they can overwinter. And that's really the main reason that they're a problem. Our native lady beetles don't overwinter in houses as much. They don't come out in swarms and just sort of are all over the place indoors. Most of our native lady beetles will find places outside or they'll lay their eggs at different times so that they don't have, they're not uh, hiding inside your attic or wherever it is they find inside the house. Currently they are in 46 states and as you can see, it, it's kind of isolated the two that they're not in. So I have a feeling that's not gonna last forever either, even though, you know, 40 years, that's not too, not too shabby to find your way into the, most of the United States. Why are they all over the side of my house? The first place people notice these lady beetles is usually on the south or southwest side of the house. You'll see them because they're looking for a place to overwinter and because that's the sunny side of most houses. And especially if you have a house that's painted white or a light color, you'll notice them out there before you actually see them coming inside the house. And that's actually a good time to start acting to make sure they don't get inside. How do you keep them out? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do and they're the same as with stink bugs. First, find out how they're getting in. Check outside for small openings, especially. Ladybugs are even smaller than stink bugs. What you're looking for is any small area. It could be a crack around a faucet. It could be a vent opening for a, for a clothes dryer. Make sure all of those are surrounded by weather stripping or by caulking, something that will prevent all those holes from giving them an entrance. You can build them out by sealing around windows and doors, and that's easier to see from the inside. Um, walk around and look at the windows and see if you see sunlight through gaps up above or on the sides and cover all wall-mounted air conditioners and anything that might be an exit, like um, I mentioned clothes dryers, but also fans that are built into the wall. Make sure those are all sealed up and screened on one side. How do you get them out of the house? The reason to get them out is because these guys can stain as well as smelling pretty bad. They also, actually, they can bite. They have uh, chewing, chewing mouth parts. It's, it's very uncommon. You really have to get up close and personal with them. But vacuuming is probably the most efficient way of removing them. Um, but when you do vacuum, um, they do excrete a yellow liquid. So if it's on something that might stain, you might want to not vacuum off that until they go onto something that you can either paint over or clean up. Um, there are some traps. Um, black light traps are used. So, uh, and those are best with a sticky card next to them. So they're getting towards the black light and they're sticking to something and you'd have to just change out that sticky card. And just like with this uh, brown marmorate stink bug, uh, insecticides are not recommended. Spraying them in your house is not, it's not a solution. If you do, you know, know that they're hanging out in your wall and you spray them in your wall and kill them all. Now you have all these dead insects, which will, you know, also cause things like carpet beetles to move in to, to eat them. And then the carpet beetles will look for other things and might eat some of your possessions. So Really, insecticides are not recommended. Um, you want to get rid of them and not just, just kill them on the spot. What else is being done? Well, unlike the brown marmorae stink bug, not much because they're beneficial insects, right? Um, they eat soft-bodied insects like aphids, mealy bugs, scale. You know, as Mary was saying, they were introduced as a biological control. And since the, they're not bothering agriculture or our forests, people aren't really uh, doing much to try and get rid of them. Although studies do show that they compete with native lady beetles, so that that is an issue um, if we want to save all of our native fauna. Um, 
this is this is a problem. But um, studies are looking into how we can uh, better provide habitat for our native lady beetles. Now I'm going to talk about some occasion, occasional invaders. So these, you know, the brown marmorated stink bug and the multicolored Asian lady beetle, they usually come on swarms. Um, you can find them, you can find them almost every year. The next few ones that I want to talk about, um, they're not, not as prolific. Uh, you might find one or two, but it's good to know what you, you find in your house because uh, what you have depends on how you should, how you should treat it. So um, first I want to say this is a kissing bug and we do not have kissing bugs in New York state. A lot of these uh, occasional invaders are misidentified as kissing bugs. Uh, kissing bugs are dangerous in that they do transmit Chagas disease, which can be quite serious if, if left untreated, but we don't have them in New York state. They've, they've never been found here as far as I can tell. Um, and even the states around us that have found them south of us, they found like one or two uh, ever. So uh, the first thing is they're not kissing bugs. So no kissing bugs. Um, what they could be, uh, one of the common things is a box elder bud, a box elder, box elder bug. Um, so they're looking for a warm place to, to, to overwinter. They don't sting or bite. They don't reproduce in your homes like all the other ones. Um, sometimes they will kind of form a, a collection of them, but not nearly as common as the other ones. Um, and they, they, they're out in the landscape. They feed on maples and other, other trees and shrubs during the year. And again, they're just looking for a place to overwinter. So this one is one you might, might find coming into your home, but not in large amounts. And you, you know, do the same thing. You vacuum it up, um, you catch it, you, you let it go, or you catch it and you kill it. You'd freeze it, you'd flush it, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. This one is, uh, common in, in my office all the time. Every year I find five or six of these come in for the winter. Um, it's called the Western conifer seed bug. Um, it's uh, not native to here. It's native to Western North America, hence the Western, and it has moved eastward. Um, they are known to congregate um, and exclusion is the key. So you might find a bunch of them together. Um, and they have the, if you look at their back here on the on their wing, they have this like white H on both wings, a lowercase H. And that's kind of the very distinctive marking for them. Um, to know that that's what they are. They also, they're leaf-footed bugs. So if you look at their legs, this this tibia is uh, swollen and flattened. So that's another thing to look look out for that really sets them apart from the kissing bugs. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the kissing bugs. So I can see how someone might mistake them, but there's some really distinct differences. Um, those H's are really key. Um, they also have those, those flattened uh, back legs. Those are also key. Um, and they're not as uh, oval-shaped as the kissing bug. So again, these, I mean, I find them, as I said, I find about six in my office every single, every single year. So it's, it's likely that you might come across one. The next occasional invader is the wheel bug. This is one of my favorite insects. Um, so it's called the wheel bug. Cause if you look at its back, it has this cog on its back. It's pretty distinctive. These are very large. They're like, uh, I'd say an inch, an inch and a half, uh, long. So they're quite large and they can be quite uh, alarming. It is a beneficial insect. You can see right here, this is its mouth part uh, hanging off its head. It's kind of reddish in, in the photo um, and it uses that to stab and suck the juices out of other insects. Um, so these are beneficial. So I would, I would say, please don't kill them. What you should do is collect them carefully and put them outside. They can stab you with their mouth parts, but it's, it's unlikely and you can carefully and safely do it without, without getting bit. Um, but so those are wheel bugs. Uh, good. Those are the good guys. So that that is kind of the end of our presentation. So just to review, we had our brown marmorated stink bug, our multicolored Asian lady beetle, our box elder bug, our western conifer seed bug, and our wheel bug. And really, when it comes to these, exclusion is is key. If you you know can seal up your house, you're not going to get be getting bugs in, and you'll probably be saving on heat as well. So really, what you want to do, the best thing is to keep them out. And once they get in, then you know you have a few options to get them out.